All right, so the coolest part about these is that they're actually super cheap. So cost of this is like, I think it was like 17 or $18 for one. Um, of course, it all adds up when you get all of the fittings and stuff. But the coolest part is I don't have to weld in threaded inserts. This whole piece here at the end is threaded and the same on this side, which is really cool. There's a little bit of oil on there and I don't have a rag, but um, so that's cool. The other thing too is that they're reverse threaded. So when this is on the suspension component, if I need to make it longer, I twist it one way and it gets longer. I twist it the other way, it gets shorter and put some jam nuts on it. So, so all these fittings are the same. Those are spacers that I may or may not need and most likely will have to modify. These ones are the jam nuts, left hand thread. This is one left hand male. And this is one right hand male, so that'll be perfect for example. And then here are the left, right hand nuts. I don't like how the left hand nut bag is like flimsier than the right hand nut bag. Why are they different nut bags? I'm gonna stop saying nut bag. All right. Which way we turn it? So the left makes it shorter and the right makes it longer. So that's how we'll be able to adjust it. And then of course jam nuts will lock it in place. Let's get these assembled and try them on the car. All right, so let me explain a little bit about what I've done here. So I basically had to bore this out. So part of this, uh, we had to bore it out to 5 8 inch to fit our bolts uh, for mounting, but part of it, it's a tapered bolt originally uh, from the factory. So basically part of it was like just bigger than 5 8 um, probably like 11 16 or something. By boring it out to 5 8 inch, it kind of let us get the most consistent and uh, a lot of uh, contact area. So I jammed a 19 millimeter socket on here. And basically what that allowed me to do was connect my impact to it. As you see, it's kind of rusted from sitting around. Now this is three quarters of an inch and uh, the inner bore is, sorry, it's a little cut up there. Um, inner bore is exactly uh, 5 eighths, which is really nice because although these threads aren't very clean, this bolt fits like perfect. It can rotate, but it can't wobble at all, which is really nice. So uh, basically I took some emery cloth, which is like a, basically like a cloth or a very aggressive sandpaper, but not paper, it's like cloth back or whatever. Um, and we got this like kind of nice finish on it. And basically what happened was we needed to take uh, a few thousands off um, maybe somewhere in the ballpark of like five thousandths off to get it to actually fit inside um, inside of our heim joints and our spacers. So now these were like four or five dollars a piece uh, from Speedway. So I decided to just buy a piece of tube that closely matched those dimensions and use them to uh, to create spacers. And basically, inner diameter of this is uh, three quarter inch and the bolts are five eighths. So the outer side of this is three quarter inch. It's a tight fit, so it's like pounded in, but. Um, so yeah, so it's a three quarter inch um, OD and then a five eighths inch ID. You definitely wanna try and hammer it in as straight as possible. You can see it's perfectly flush on both sides. It doesn't protrude any at all. We have these bushings that they gave us for the shocks that we're not gonna use, but it's 5 8 inch um, ID on this one. OD, I don't know, but uh, basically the bolt fits perfectly through like that. So it'll allow for decent amount of rotation. It's not gonna like clash early or anything, um, but of course it'll hopefully dampen a little bit of the noise so we don't have extreme noise in the cabin, but again, most of these Heim joints are known to be louder just because metal on metal connections and most of these connections of the suspension are going to be metal to metal. Um, I might 
later on inject some urethane where I can, but for right now, this is the only urethane I have, and it's pretty hard. It's probably in the 85 range rather than the 60 that I normally use. So uh, this mount had to be bored out to 5 eighths as well. And uh, again, just did the same process. Now we have to bore out the holes in the subframe to let our larger 5 eighths bolts fit. <coughs> Don't recommend doing this. But in the essence of time and the fact that I'm not going to be reusing it and I know exactly how much spring tension's on here, These are the coilovers. Um, so basically, took apart the top you saw earlier uh, from the OEM suspension, and I kind of marked it a little bit, and then cut out our beginning of making our tabs, mounting the uh, coilover shock. This is the top part, and this is coming in towards the axle, and basically uh, right around here, is where I'm gonna actually have that mount. So I'll probably end up having to either cut this and then weld a reinforcing plate and put a bolt through it and then put a tube to keep it from crushing and then tighten the bolt from the other side and it's gonna be like a cantilevered bolt. Um, and of course it's a 5 8 inch bolt, so it's a pretty large bolt and of course I'll go grade 10 on that too. Or my other option is to do tabs and then uh, put that through so I might ask some some people some different advice and see what I get and also see what the geometry dictates because although that might be convenient I don't think I'll have the space for it I'll have to have a spacer and then at that point my bolts a lot longer so it's gonna probably flex and bend more and that probably won't be good so I might just have to do a tab like that once we get our swedge tubes in That'll uh, fix our geometry in place so we can actually see in terms of an alignment and everything else in kind of a ballpark way where the path of travel is going to be and what clearance we need for that, for that shock. So that's going to be perfect. So it does fit really well, the shock, uh, but I think there's one part that we might have to shave down on the sway bar. Uh, but other than that, it should clear the axle. It should clear the swedge tubes, especially we did have to... Um, use the spacer again on another side on the top uh, in order to get extra space. Um, it clears the axle and everything without the spacer, but uh, when we add that one inch spacer, it gives us a lot more um, clearance on the coilover. So uh, that way we don't have to be so tied up against the sway bar and uh, we don't have to chop the entire sway bar out. Instead, we can just shave the mount a little bit. It's like three in the morning right now, so I'm pretty tired, pretty wired. Um, sorry, it's a Nicolas Cage reference for those that remember that movie. Another thing too, so because of the way the brake is configured, it does fit nicely, but the lines aren't long enough to make that radius to kind of turn back and go to the, go to the caliper where the GSX ties in. So the parking brake looks like it'll line up pretty well. I'll have to do a custom bracket for it, but other than that, it's actually going to line up pretty well and I won't have to worry too much about uh, but I'll definitely have to do custom lines so I'll probably do hard lines and then uh, do reuse the OEM line going out and connecting to the uh, to the caliper so obviously custom coilovers the rear suspension cost me uh, just under 600 I think for everything I had a, I just spent $50 on bolts on uh, the grade 10 hardware and class 8 hardware um, so class 8 and grade 10.9, so class 8 being for the standard and 10.9 being for all the metric bolts. Alright, so these bolts up here, that's going to be where our uh, differential is actually going to mount using the OEM GSX mount that we've chopped. So over there, and then we uh, went ahead and, again, still can't see much, but there's bolt holes here. But we had to bore it out to 5 eighths for our mounting bolts to mount to our 5 eighths inch uh, bore on this uh, this control arm. So we'll be able to put larger bolts through there, um, which is good, and then uh, bolt it all back together. Looking at right at about 15 and a half inches. Wise. Oh, I know y'all can't see shit right now. 
it's a bit too long, but again, we can adjust height. And the reason we couldn't use the OEM one again is this one, we need to shave off six inches. So this actually is too, too tall right now, but just wanted to see if we could adjust the preload a bit. But just the height adjustments. Not sure if any of that's showing up. Nope. I doubt any of it's going to stick, but it is officially snowing. Which is a little sad. Well, now it kind of stopped. It's pretty light now. It was snowing way more like 10 seconds ago. But we are working in the garage today. Slightly missed our deadline as far as getting it before the first snow. But um, we'll count it as not real snow. So we did get new tires on yesterday. Thanks Bell Tire for hooking us up. We showed up like an hour before they closed and uh, they got us two new tires to replace the flat ones. Uh, we're gonna keep the dry rotted old ones here. Um, they seem to at least be holding air and kind of okay. We'll probably get new ones eventually, but for right now we can get it to sit down and, uh, and check our suspension once we're done. The last things we need to do now for the rear, we need to fix one of the mounts. I'll show you that in a second. And this coil here, we need to come up with some sort of mounting system. Um, right now, this is using eighth inch plate, but I think I'm going to go up to quarter inch plate because of how I'm going to have to mount it. Um, I might do eighth on the top uh, since I'm using the OEM hat, which is like quarter inch thick here. Um, and I doubt that this will actually fold and buckle inward considering how short it is and mount that in here. Um, but again, you know, if, if something breaks, I can just build it better the second time. And that's a good way to do R&D as long as it won't kill you. So there's that. Coming in the back now that I have light. Oh, it's cold. So here's how our suspension's set up right now. So I still need to put it all together on this side, but over here you can see. Now that is not gonna work because that angle is too extreme. So we're gonna have to rotate it 90 degrees and then figure out how to put a bolt sideways. I think I have an idea for that now, um, but we'll have to figure that out. And the top one's perfect. And then the differential's in there. Ow, I hit my head. Uh, hopefully you can see how that's mounted. And you can see on that side as well. So that's how it's mounted up in there. All right, so I got these bored up to uh, right around 7 16 and uh, that's pretty much all I have to work with. And then we're taking them up to 5 8 inch with this 5 8 inch bit. I'm gonna make some mounting tabs. We've got this one that bolts up to the bottom. Then we're gonna weld this here, have a bolt through there, and then this is gonna hold our uh, control arm, lower control arm. So now we've got that board out, it doesn't take too long. Now we just put a slight chamfer on the edge to clear any burrs, especially on the back side. This one's actually turned out pretty good. Get most of the oil off, we'll hit it with uh, some acetone before we get it all welded. But here is what we're looking to do. We'll need a shorter 5 8 inch bolt, or in this case we're using a 16 millimeter since it's the same thing. We're going to put our bolt through here, which is going to go up through the bottom. Obviously this is the bolt is too long, it's not meant for this part, um, but it's going to go up that way and mount to here. That's going to allow us to mount these tabs, and then our lower control arm heim joint is going to bolt here, and it's going to come this way, and then we can fit or heim joint these mount upside down like that and that'll give us clearance so that we don't have that maximum uh, before we were getting too much angle and it wasn't able to make it on properly so going this way gives us the right angle and lets us uh, use that all right so we did have to cut the uh, sway bar mount so we'll have to relocate the sway bar to the rear uh, which sort of sucks because the sway bar actually fits perfectly 
around not only the suspension as far as the coilovers, it looks like we could tie in straight to that mount with a little shim or something there, uh, which again, it would have been perfect except for the fact that, uh, that this bolt hole right here basically ended up colliding back there. So let's get that out of the way for right now. And then this parking cable looks like it'll actually fit in stock length. I might have to bend it a little bit to get the clearance around the coil that I need. Um, but other than that, it should tie pretty well into the GSX. So this is at ride height, which right now is a little bit too high. That puts like definitely rally styling uh, with some pretty gnarly uh, wheel gap, probably somewhere in the five inch wheel gap, which is about an inch and a half more than I was looking to have. Uh, but again, we'll figure that out later. Uh, we will need to put some sort of uh, strap in the back here, probably tie into that bolt there from the original GSX coilovers. And uh, we'll have to tie up to the frame rail and we'll put a bolt through there. Um, and what that's gonna allow us to do is tie a strap and we'll have to do something basically like what the Baja guys do, which is uh, they put a uh, max droop strap on there because since this coil doesn't actually have a, a limited droop stop on it, it'll just uh, over time probably fatigue itself as it's just being rammed, which sort of sucks. So that's right where that rear corner starts to lift. And so if I lower that back down, that's pretty much what we're looking at with suspension. So those tabs right now on the bottom, they're not fully welded in place yet. They're just tacked to, uh, to hold that in. But now that we've confirmed fitment and alignment and everything else, and uh, we've checked our clearance here at Again, max droop as far as uh, what the suspension's capable of, but of course we're gonna limit it with those limiting straps. And uh, as it compresses, we do continue to have clearance and uh, that suspension tucks right up nicely. So that's perfect. So let's get that finish welded. Nice. I'm sad I didn't film that first one. That was like perfect. <laughs> Whatever's easiest for you. Watch out. <laughs>